So just to begin, just to get it out there. Well, I'm sorry, we need to do, let's do the intro before. But you no, but <laughs> but I was right, right? I was correct. I was correct. It remains to be seen. Say say no, <laughs> say the words. Say I was Alice, you were right. Yes, vindication. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to the Horny Book Club. Hello. I'm Ellen. And I'm Alice. And this week, it's Akatar number two. It's the Court of Mist and Fear. <laughs> no one's ever called it Akatar number two in their life. Is it not the Akatar series? Yeah, but no one, I, but people always just say Akatar, Akamath, Akawar. And Listen. then we get into the Ak- Akoffs. Ak- Akoffs and then Akosf. And it's confusing. as well. Um, it's Akamath. It's A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. You're correct. It is Akatar number I'm two. I'm breaking the mold. Just as usual, huge spoiler alert for A Court of Mist and Fury. Also, obviously, for A Court of Thorns and Roses. It's the second one in the series, guys. And, like, possibly the third one. Yeah. We're like, going to try our best, but, like, just be warned. Yeah. We'll only discuss information that we feel is very obviously given in this one. Mm. But that does obviously lead on a bit to what's going to happen in the third and for than fifth, if I'm honest. Before we begin, make sure you're following us on everything that you can follow us on, including Instagram at the H Book Club, TikTok, HBC Podcast. You can email us, hornybookclub at gmail.com. You can follow us on Spotify, which is just the Horny Book Club. Rate us five stars. We've not been saying that, and the ratings have been slowing down. Please rate Guys. us five stars wherever you get your podcasts. It helps us immeasurably subscribe to us on youtube at hbc podcast and turn the bell on to be notified when we post which is just the same time as when we post the podcast which is 9 a.m on some fridays <laughs> on random thr- fridays throughout the year and deal with it we also have a Kofi. the link of it is in the bio of our instagram and also in the description of all the episodes including on youtube where you can give us money if you would like to give us money up to you so yeah akamath wow wow i've certainly got some feelings what about you i <laughs> I do also have some thoughts, feelings, and opinions. Observations. Observations. Musings, yeah. one would say. <laughs> for those of you who didn't who haven't listened to the Akatar episode, just some context for our reading experiences. This is Ellen's first time reading the series. And this is my second third? or third time reading the series. I think it's my third time reading this. Yeah. But I don't know why. I can't remember reading it a second time, but Storygraph tells me it's my uh, third, third time reading third it. Read. Yeah, I'm coming at it from a different perspective of re-experiencing this world for the second or third time, and this is your first time getting into it. This is your was your first time seeing like Valaris, seeing the Night Court, oh seeing the Court of Nightmares and the Court of God. Dreams. Duh. Fuck. Oh, we will get to it, but Jesus Christ, it was it was good shit. So yeah, it's like sort of Alice is much more um knows a lot more about the world, knows a lot more about like what's going on and all that kind of stuff. Whereas I'm just sort of here for the vibes. I don't really know anything about it, and I'm just sort of reading it, and I'm like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Um, but also, <sighs> I love Rizad so much. Yeah, you might not know this if this is your first episode, but we Alice has a reading journal i now do a reading journal and the first time alice read this she was when she was doing her 2021 reading journal my first reading journal my first proper reading journal it's very good in the in iacta episode alice read her review out from 2021 so my review from 2021 when i first read this book oh the first 150 pages of this book were not it yeah (laughs) like i wrecked i got it all i like that she was desperate for change but i just needed a tiny bit more build up before tamlin just fully abused her <laughs> yes correct from when she was settled in the night court though i loved it valaris yeah. was an amazing vivid setting and i loved all the new characters cassian was my favorite mm. stood the test of time there mm. and i just loved the level of normalcy resand is a very good man and a very good high lord why am i writing like i'm in year five like i'm you 10 are, years yeah Resand is a very, very good, good man, man and a very good high lord, full stop. The bits where they are pretending to be bad did really cringe me out, though. I loved Reese's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I loved Reese's tale of waiting for Feyre and the ending, <gasps> fucking hell, that was mad and so good. So some of my opinions have changed, I won't lie. What about? I don't know. I think I enjoyed Reese a lot more this time around than I did when I first read it. Mm. I remember, like, I've always kind of said, I'm not a huge Resand girly. Because I, I wasn't. That's my truth. And I'm allowed to speak my truth. Is that I wasn't. <laughs> and this time reading it, I don't know again if it's kind of like the nostalgia element and like mm. the, as I said last time, I there are some really like iconic bits in this book. But I was like 
this is fucking iconic. Like the I, whole time through it. And I was like, Reese? I was like way more into Reese than yeah, I was the first time yeah, around. I yeah. read the whole series. It took him a second to grow on me. But like by the time he, fi- he fingers her for the first time. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> I was like, this. And I, I was on the plane to Belfast. And I so that's about page f- 400, 400 yeah. something like that. I was like. I'm going to die if yeah. these two don't end up together. Yeah. The whole, oh, sorry, well, we will get to it. But like the bit where he was like, the first time I saw you at the, um, the Calamai. Yeah. The Calamai. And he goes, I've been looking for you. Yeah. He was like, yeah. I highlight, yeah. I was like, I'm going to die. Yeah. There you are. I've been looking for you. Thank you for finding her for me. And he was like, because I'd been dreaming about you for like five years. Yeah. And he was like, and she was like, he really meant that. The first words he spoke to me were true. And I was like, <laughs> and it took a second for it to sink in. And I yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, so what you're telling me is this is actually a book of ultimate male yearning. Yeah. Okay. Let's do a synopsis then. I'm going to split this synopsis kind of into two bits we're gonna do the romance synopsis and then like the politics oh gosh because it's too it's too interchanging too much stuff yeah okay. so we leave off at the end of akatar with mm. Faye. Faye. yeah that's I, a note. No, I know but i fucking hate that she's called favorite and they're, they're in the land of Faye. pisses me off oh honestly <laughs> sorry that's such a weird it really it's like elsie silver yeah rose rosalie and rose hill yeah just pick any How other name. How many names are there in the world? Yeah, and you're and in the you're fantasy like, world. You can make up a name. You can make up all of your other fucking names. One of them's called Tamlin. And yeah. you're like, Feyre. And where are they? Faye. Faye. May as well call her Prithian. <laughs> She's Hi, called Prithian. the Wall. She's called <laughs> the Night Court. <laughs> Hi, my name's Night Court. Is that what's that short for? It's short for Night Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney. <laughs> anyway, okay. So where oh, we sorry. leave off is that after the trials under the mountain, Reese killed Amarantha. Feyre is a high fae because she Amarantha snapped her neck before she died, obviously. And then they all sprinkle her with glitter. And they all if sprinkle her with glitter, and she becomes a high high fae. Yeah. Everyone's free. Back to the courts they go. Mm. She obviously leaves with Tamlin, goes back to the spring court, and when she's there, Tamlin acts crazy. Tamlin is losing the plot. <laughs> Tamlin needs to be locked up because he's, he's not. Yeah, he's not. He's not, he's not well. Not fared well from he's being not, under. No, and neither is Feyre. To be fair to her, no. The first like hundred pages, she's just nightmare after nightmare, yeah. just being sick every day, yeah. every night, remembering the, the fairies that she killed under the mountain as part of her trial in particular. But the problem is, is that Tamlin is trying to protect her and will not let her therefore do anything because mm. he's like, no. He keeps saying, which I think is so funny, "You've done enough. Just rest now. You've done enough." you saved us all oh, you saved us all to and I'm like, no, do she nothing and she's like just sat there being like i'm just so bored i'm just left with my thoughts my horrible horrible thoughts of mm. being under the mountain constantly mm. tamlin who i love and who's meant to love me is constantly going off to protect the wall and for like weeks on end doing other shit alone. whatever yeah. leaving her alone with high priestess ianthe oh. bitch to plan the wedding yeah. Between Tamlin and Feyre. Feyre's not like other girls, so she doesn't want to... Um, no. She doesn't care about the wedding. She doesn't care about, like, materials no. or colours or anything like that. Well, also, everything they're planning for the wedding sounds fucking horrible. The dress is crazy. <laughs> the dress. Yeah. The way he describes, she describes the dress, I was like, what is this? Yeah. And Tamlin's just basically being like, I must protect you. So she won't... She's not allowed to do anything and she keeps asking them him and lucian please can i come with you please let me do anything let me have some sort of responsibility i'm going insane tamlin keeps saying no 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 Mm. it gets to the wedding day and so it's been three months and if you'll remember resand and feyre under the mountain struck a a bargain yes that in exchange for resand's help under the mountain when they were free feyre would go and spend one week a month with him in the night court classic when you know his motivations for that i know oh Oh, but you're like well done race so good idea he doesn't but he doesn't call in that bargain for three months he just leaves her alone and fair is sort of like oh i wonder what's gonna happen with that oh i'm not really sure i keep uh, my my boyfriend keeps locking me in the house so i'm a bit like "Mm," distracted they're at the wedding yeah and she's walking down there and she's feeling turt wrapped as fuck she's like the thought of my only responsibilities for the rest of my life, my fucking immortal, eternal life being mm. 
planning parties, hanging out with Ianthe, and she stops and Tamlin's like, Feyre, and like sticks out his hand and she, in her head, She's like kind of just like no 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 yeah, no she no, like no, freezes. no 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 I was going yeah. to fall apart right there right then and they'd see precisely how ruined I was help me help me help me save me please save me get me out end this come bride and be joined with your true love come bride and let good triumph at last and she's very much like I'm not good I'm nothing like I killed those people under the mountain yeah this whole bit she's like I'm an absolute piece of yeah, shit yeah I'm broken I'm broken I've yeah. got no soul I've got nothing going on like I just I'm a terrible person I can't believe no yeah. one's like realised she's struggling because. All the fairies basically in the whole world, but ultimately in the spring court, are like, uh, <laughs> Lady Curse Curse Breaker, yeah. Curse Breaker you, you saved her life. And she's all. like, N- why why don't they all think I'm terrible? Because I killed two people. I tried to get my traitorous lungs to draw air so I could voice the word, no, no, but I didn't have to say it. Thunder cracked behind me as if two boulders had been hurled against each other. People screamed, falling back, a few screamed. vanishing outright as darkness erupted. I whirled, and through the night drifting away like smoke on a wind, I found Resand straightening the lapels of his black jacket. Hello, Feyre, darling, he purred, and my note is, the reaction I just had was embarrassing. Because that is iconic. It's so it, fucking good. <laughs> like, I, when she's walking down the aisle and you're like, well, what's going to happen? Because she's not going to marry him. Like, I know she's not going to marry him. And he turns up and you are literally like, yes! Yeah. And then, so she goes with him yeah yeah he's like i'm here to call my to like claim my bargain and tamlin's like uh don't think so and resan's like mm, there's actually nothing you can do mate yeah off i go yeah and then she's like you fucking pig <laughs> then we start this kind of process from that point of her spending a week in the night court where resan like leaves her alone yeah just largely. leaves her alone um and she's obviously expecting the night court to be like horrible like, horrible, under, the mountain. like under the mountain because that's what amarantha said she based it off and i'm like Get your own ideas, Amaranth. Oh my god, what an idiot. But she's just like left in this like beautiful room on the mountain where there's like air to breathe and like sky to see and she doesn't feel trapped anymore. Or, uh... It's not got any walls, basically. No, it's not got any walls. Resan's t- teaching her to read. She learns very Finally. quickly. Yeah. And, but it's like through things of being like, um, makes her write notes of like, Resand is the most handsome and cunning High Lord. Resand <laughs> is the most hilarious High Lord, like all of that. And she's like, oh, pig. You pig, pig. <laughs> like, Feyre. <sighs> guess, yeah. I mean, it's a get a clue situation. Yeah. And she gets to wear trousers again when she's at the night court. Unbelievable. So the, Culotte. Out- the outfit that he that she describes. So she's wearing magenta silk shoes. My high-waisted peach pants were loose and billowing, gathered at the ankles with velvet cuffs of bright gold. The long sleeves of the matching top were made of gossamer, also gathered at the wrist, and the top itself hung just to my navel, revealing a sliver of skin as I walked. And I was like, why is yeah. this the fact? I mean, I was like, so that's Jasmine from Aladdin. Yeah, she's, yeah, yeah. So we're doing a bit of just sort of cultural appropriation. Well, comfortable, easy to move in, to run, feminine, exotic. Yeah. And I was like, well, Sarah. Yeah, well, there's there are some issues with the description of the Illyrian race. Yeah. A 110%. Yeah. Sarah's tried to be like, oh, but no, because Cassian and Asriel and Reese, they're like great and they're, they're Illyrian. And I'm like, you made, but you made every other Illyrian like who is clearly not white people. Yeah. You would assume based on like Middle Eastern. Yeah. You've made them like fucking horrific. Really like... Um, Barbaric, isn't it? And backwards. And yeah. Like, sorry, air, with air quotations, backwards. And like, um, d- they h- hate women. Yeah. And like all the shit. And you're, you're just a bit like... Sarah. Okay, Sarah. When I read that script of that outfit, I was like... Yeah, exotic. I was like... Ex- the word exotic is not... Ooh. And I'm like, it's different to what she has been wearing. Yeah. But I'm like, don't use the word exotic. Well, I'm like, we could also just be like, it's different because she's only really worn like dresses and corsets since she's come out from under the amount ma- under the mountain. Under the mountain. And she was excited to be wearing trousers. Trues. Trues. But, but I, yeah, so you're like, why not emphasize that rather than being like exotic. Exotic. Also being like easy to move in. And I'm like, you're wearing a crop top. Yeah. Like I'm like, that's not what I would be like. That's what I want to run in. Yeah. I've got to run away. Thank God I'm wearing my gossamer crop top. What? Not the gossamer. The gossamer crop top is crazy. <laughs> the velvet cuffs. Anytime she's in the night court, she's like, I'm back in my outfit. And you're just like, oh. Yeah, and but, then- then, but then, <laughs> then later when she's in Valara, she's like, in my leggings and sweaters. I know. And I'm like, why do they have leggings? Yeah. It's all very confusing. When they talk, she talks about later on, like putting on a pair of leggings, big fluffy socks and like 
a big jumper like sweatshirt i was like why are we in rose hill why? like literally, <laughs> literally i was like why, why are we, we in rose hill why are we in Nancy silver but then also it's because she's like we're at the townhouse and yeah. it's just we're down to earth yeah, we- <laughs> we're down to earth and you're just like, we're just normal men <laughs> we're just normal men <laughs> But Reese is always, always yeah. either in his Illyrian flight leathers or in like a fucking suit. Black suit. He's always yeah. in his jackets. He's always adjusting his lapels. And I'm like, he's not fucking down to earth. He's not got fuzzy and socks Cassian's on. Cassian's in like sweatpants. <laughs> Shirtless and Reese is like full tux. Yeah, like, like ready to go. Yeah, he's got his tails on. Like I'm like, what are we all... <laughs> he's got a top hat and a monocle. <laughs> he's ready to go. We don't worry because there's a slit in the back for his wings. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no. We have to... We, yeah, sorry. We have to get through the synopsis. Anyway, so then we have this back and forth constantly for a couple of like 150 pages basically yeah. of her going to the night court for a week, getting to know Reese and his cousin Morrigan more and like being a bit involved in like he shows her a map at some point and she's like, ooh, I'm learning. Oh, a map. Oh, a map. A war yeah. is coming. Ooh. But it's a blank map. It's, yeah. Because she references that blank map about 400 times yeah. in the book. And so then every time she it. goes back to, uh, to the spring court, she's like, Fuck, this is, I'm just, this is boring. This is fucking boring. And also, I, I'm starting to hate Tamlin because there's things <laughs> like the tithe. And all I could think of during this scene, yeah, so I'm going to use it as an analogy, was Princess Diaries 2. Yes. Um, yes, 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 yes. The massively. man brings her a chick, brings Julie Andrews a chicken. Yeah. And they lift it back at, and he's like, a chicken for your father. And then, <laughs> although the next man brings her like a, f- a, f- a dead fish. like, <laughs> And she's like, oh. yeah. And so like the, the spring yeah. court has something like that where everyone has to come and basically like pay their taxes and pay what you know a relative way uh price compared to their wage and living blah blah blah. but you have to bring something and if you don't you have three days grace and if you can't fill it then like it's implied you're gonna gonna kill you it's gonna turn into a beast and come and kill you lucian's basically like he does what he has i mean you're a bit like lucian yeah Get out, get, of grip, yeah. get out of Tamlin's ass um he's like he does what he has to do and Faye was like that seems like really weird and very fucked up yeah and then, like, and then later, she's like, what about the tithe, Reese? And Reese is like, no, no one, one does yeah. that. That's really horrible, actually. Really and she's backwards. like, shit, my shit. ex did that. Um, <laughs> but she, like, my, my, my really fucked up abusive ex-boyfriend did that. Yeah. So things like that keep happening. And then she kind of loses it one day and is like, Tamlin's like, I'm going to the wall again for two weeks or whatever. There'll be sentries like with you all the time because she's she said to him before, you have to like ease up. You have to let me mm. go on a fucking walk by myself. At least like I'm going to fucking scream if you don't. And he's like, OK, I'll ease up. And then like does that for a week and then stops. And it's like classic, classic mm. behavior. Mm. And then one day she's like, you have to take me with you. Take me with you. I'm going to fucking scream if you don't take yeah, me with you. Yeah, she's like, like screaming at him. She's yeah. like, and then he, it's awful actually. I forgot how actually it's, yeah, it's really yeah, quite obsessing. It's, yeah. Is that she's like, I cannot stay in this house anymore. I cannot stay in this house. He put guards up on the whole house. So everyone else, like all of his servants and other people who live there can walk in and out. But she is trapped in this house. Yeah, like she tries to walk out the door and she like can't bangs like, into, there's like an yeah. invisible like yeah and she's like pounding at it pounding at it and Tamlin just walks off and gets on his horse and Lucian's looking at her through the through like the wind or whatever it is being like oh, uh, fuck, so, so fuck. Babe, and yeah. then like like is clearly doesn't know what to do and then goes after him she uh, erupts basically she has a panic attack but it's a magic panic attack so like darkness because she's got all these powers from the high lords that she doesn't know about ah uh, yes darkness like envelops her and she's like screaming screaming blah 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 and then it's really sad and then more arrives more like walks in who's reese's cousin picks her up carries her out of the spring court to reese who is wasn't allowed to cross the border and he takes her to the night court Mm. and now when you're at the night court when he takes her there we see that she's actually in a place called valares which is the hidden city hidden city of the night court because you expect the night court to be, yeah, under the mountain, goblins and ghouls doing horrible things. Blah, blah, blah. That kind of thing. <laughs> 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 sort of shit going on. And that does exist. That does exist. But a court of nightmares. Court of nightmares, but within the court the night court. Within the night court, there's the court of nightmares. And there's also the court of dreams. Mm. Which is Valaris, which is this like city in the snow topped mountains where there's star fall and it's lovely in the day, but you should see it at night. You should see it at night, Farrah. Yeah. And they're in a townhouse and she meets all the gang. And then like she basically, after that, she never goes back to... Yeah, she's like, I come to the conclusion with myself that I'm never going back. Because there's a bit... So before he traps her in the house, there's the bit where he like basically explodes and like hurts her. Yeah. And she manages to shield herself, but ultimately she's like... That was fucked up. That was fucked up, yeah. That was Tamlin, sorry, who did that. Yeah, Yeah, sorry, Tamlin. And he's like... 
oh fuck i'm really sorry for her and she's just like and that's when he eases up a bit yeah and then he goes back in it and then yeah and then she gets taken away and then she's like yeah i'm, I'm never going back and she sends him a letter basically yeah. being like by the way, I'm never coming back. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm safe. Thank you for all you've done for me, but I'm never coming back. Yeah. See you later. Um, and then like while she's there, Risan and his inner circle, they train her basically to fight and get her like strength up. And I'm like, finally, the woman needs I to know, be trained. Finally. And also then Risan teaches her to harness all the different elements of power that each high lord of the different courts has given her. Yeah. And then so over over like a long period of time it's not like she gets to the night court and isn't after that and is literally like reese let's snog they build a friendship she builds lots of friendships she builds up her strength and skills and learns lots about you know the war that's impending and basically the rest of the romance plot is kind of that eventually they fall they she realizes she has feelings for reese and then she discovers that they are mated so and we'll get to that scene later you on, really sort of know you you can guess, as I said at the last episode, at the end of Akhtar, you know that they're mated because he's looking at her and he's like, Fuck. he like goes like, <gasps> yeah. But she doesn't know that. Although I'm a little bit like, come on, babe, just one. Get a although clue. I'm like, she's very traumatized. Yeah, I think that the waiting for Feyre to get into it with Reese, you are a little bit like, this is quite a lot. Mm. There are lots of scenes too arguably too many scenes and it's great and you like it and the slow burn is slow burning but where she's like he sort of looks at me and he says something nice and i look at him and i think god maybe i no i could never i didn't find that oh no i, I, I was just a bit like they were come on i like, thought the build up he's was so... clearly obsessed with you let's just snog yeah. no because i think they do do a quite a good job at points of being like if she's considering something he'll then say something that will make her go like oh yeah no he's just like a massive flirt and like doesn't actually like me blah blah blah. so obviously you know that they're gonna they're gonna shag at some point but there are bits where like i think the slow burn slow burned really well actually it was a bit and it's interesting because i love a slow burn but i i was i think i was just impatient because i'm like you want them to get together yeah. from basically like when she's under the mountain in book one yeah and so especially by the time from you're at, hello fair darling at yeah. the wedding you're like yeah, yeah! shame on the aisle <laughs> <laughs> Fuck down. so by the time you're at page 400 you yeah. are a bit like guys come on come the fuck on i hate to say this but like i do think there are lots of bits where you're like this is good this is this is well written and interesting and realistic yeah like all the stuff about how she basically has ptsd i was like yeah this is great because yeah. i'm like yeah she definitely would and if you just glossed over it and she'd been fine, but she'd been a bit like, oh, time is really boring. You would be like, yeah, you're right, babe. Like, no. you are you not a bit more fucked up about all the things that have happened to you? Like, she's like, oh, I really can't even think about like going into a cave. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what you would be like. And then yeah, when she's like, I'm just not sure I should just be jumping into this straight away because I'm broken as well, and I'm like, Rusan's like, but you forget that I'm broken too. Yeah. Or like, my maybe neither of us are broken. And we can fix each other. And you're oh. like. Yeah, fuck now do you want to shag <laughs> you should fuck you guys should fuck you should finger each other actually yeah and then they do and then they do so simultaneously whilst the romance is going on i will try and explain some of the politics that is happening alongside and, and to be it. honest a lot of the romance is in the background yeah yeah what's go what's going on Great is question. that <laughs> <laughs> right okay bear with me everyone what's going on what's going on is that if you recall i don't know if you will is that Amaranth, because I barely <laughs> do, or... because some of the back plot with Amarantha, who was the villain of the first one, is that in the war, like 500 years ago, she killed a human called Durian and put him in a ring. I'm where not it was just sure if we discussed eye. it last episode. I don't think we did really either. But yeah, when they're under the mountain, she's got a ring on and it's got a human's eye in it that's like twizzling around. Yeah. And, and that's, that's Durian. Durian, who was the human one of the human like leaders of the war 500 years ago yeah that resand and cass and everyone fought in and more fought in and they fought on the they side fought of on the, the, the side of the humans but then durian went like crazy with power and fucked over amaranth's sister as well so she killed him but did she but she put him in a in a in a, in a ring and so they're basically but just his like, eye but he was still alive yeah, very confusing yeah, he's he, like his soul was trapped in the eye so he's gone mad. And then the King of Highburn. Yeah. Which is like an uh, 
which is Ireland. It's Ireland, yeah. The the Isle of Ireland. The yes. Isle of Ireland is like he wants to get, have another war, basically take over the human realm, expand his. So in land. Highburn, this is explained at the beginning of the third one. Um, so oh, in, please, <laughs> in Highburn, they basically like because it's a it's separate from Prithian. If Prithian is the UK, Prithian, yeah. Prithian is England, Scotland, oh, and Wales, Wales all together. Highburn is Ireland. The Isle of Ireland, yeah. And um, the reason they had the war is because the fairies owned the entire of Prithian. The wall didn't exist and the fairies were using humans as slaves. Yes, yes. And basically there was like a human uprising that included some fairies who were like, yeah, human slaves are bad. And the conclusion of that war was the fairies have this much and then they have the wall and then the humans are at the bottom, as we said in the last episode. In Highburn, because it's like a separate area, separate piece of land, the king of Highburn was basically like really anti that war. He was like the leader of being wanting to keep the slaves. And so the king of Highburn's like, let's do another war. Let's break the wall down, get the human slaves back because we're just, we're not living. We're not living, we're not loving. So so why is Durian on, the, on that side? Because I think... Is it just because he wants to get back to Miriam? He wants, he's got all his yeah. personal... Okay. Basically, so... <laughs> du- so... So more back is that there's a half fae, half human called Miriam, who was Moore's best friend. Yeah, basically. was Moore's best friend. They kind of fell in love, Durian and Miriam. Mm. Durian goes power crazy during all of this war, mm. and then Dracon ends up on the face on the hu- human side as yeah. well. And it's kind of this thing of like Durian was so power crazy that he didn't realize that like two steps behind him, Miriam and Dracon were falling in love. Yeah. There was no cheating. Moore was very clear on that. Was, yeah, you are like... She didn't touch him until things were done with Jiren. You were like, okay. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have cared if they did. Jiren I really seems like a bad guy. Kind of shit. But Dracon and Miriam then like get together and Jurian goes fucking crazy. Yeah. To the point of like sabotaging both sides of the war just ends up on this personal like... Personal vendetta, yeah. Yeah. Mir- they think Miriam and Dracon have died. They're not there. Like on the Isle of Skye, let's say. They're on a, inexplicably, Miriam and Dracon are on a, a secret island yeah. where Fae and humans live, live side by side. Yeah. So basically, Durian is like, my whole goal is to basically find Miriam and kill her. Kill her, And yeah. be like, fuck you. And that's his whole goal. So he will literally do anything. So he's in the ring. And then at the beginning of book two, he gets brought back to life yeah. by King the King of Highburn, Highburn with the cauldron. Yeah. Now that's a, I'm not sure we're really going to go into no. much into detail about the cauldron and the two books no, because honestly cause... you're just like what the fuck. Okay, you just you're just like okay, just believe just what we're saying. It. You, you just, just have to accept yeah. it. Yeah, there's a magical cauldron and a magical book and a, two magical books. Yeah, and half, they two halves of the book, two halves of one book. King Highburn's like, I'm going to use the cauldron to break down the wall, and that's how we'll start the war because it'll be an absolute free for all because there'll be humans everywhere, there'll be fairies everywhere, crazy stuff. Hmm. Um, and they're like the only thing we can do <laughs> to break and it's not really explained why or how but the only person who could possibly basically like disable this cauldron is Feyre yeah because she's the most powerful person to ever exist because she's a combination of all the high lords and to find how she can do that she has to find these two books if you're finding this confusing it's this confusing in the book um you just are like, okay, we're uh, going to find yeah, half a book. Now. I just okay, have to okay. believe you. They go to the summer court to steal one of the first halves of the book. She betrays the guy from the summer oh, court. Really sad. Yeah, really sad. He sends her a blood ruby and is like, crazy. Your head's fine. Yeah. They go and they parlay with the uh, with the human queens, as you say, and that's how we get back in with Nestor and Elaine, the sisters, as well, because they do it at their house. They which have is quite funny. to host the human queens at the human house, and so they go to Nestor and Elaine's house. Yeah. Where's the oh the dad's off? Conveniently, the dad's just not there he's doing merchant things his again. legs are peeled apparently and he's back being a merchant <laughs> he's back being a merchant and um he's on the continent and then so the queens don't trust reese at all because they're like but you're the most evil most dis- i've heard about the court of nightmares blah 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 blah. yeah you're disgusting what can we do to to trust you that you are as you say you are you're a good man blah blah, blah. so he shows them through an <gasps> orb he shows so them sad. valaris the city that he's protected for 5,000 years or however so, long. So while they were under the mountain, by the way, everybody in... You know how everyone was under the mountain and we were like... How, how do you all fit? How do they all fit? They weren't all there. In the second book at some point, because Faye was like, wasn't everyone under the mountain? And Reese is like, oh, there's like off ca- offshoots, basically. She had them in like... Yeah, camps. like camps, but still under the mountain. They were still all there, but we just didn't see them all. When they came to get Reese, basically, and she poisoned him and took all of his power, the last bit of his power he used, he everyone who was 
under the mountain from the night court he like warped their mind basically to forget this city City. and forget his like inner circle so so while they were all under the mountain everybody who lives in Valaris including Asriel, Cassian, Moore, Amran Amran, none of them were there None they were just under the mountain. They were just chilling in Valaris, waiting for Rhysand to come yeah. back. A bit worried, obviously. Yeah. He then shows the city to the mortal queens, which is a big old step, obviously, because he's like, I literally protected this from the most evil woman in the world. Yeah, I've not shown anyone. None of the other High Lords know. Blah, blah, blah. No one knows this place exists. And they're like, mm, okay, we're still not giving you the book, though. No. But one of the queens is like, oh, I yeah. trust, you know, thank you for showing this. I trust it. Like, sneaks the book in. And when they all vanish, where she was sat, the book is just there. And they're like, oh. Then they end, they, the other queens then kill that queen, drop her onto a spoke and in, a, in an attack on Valares. The fucking human queens have now paired up with King Highburn with King Highburn to get a mortal life themselves. There's a massive attack on Valaris. Lots of people die. Very sad. Very horrible. Feyre like fucking utilizes her fucking powers and, and smashes like, it. Yeah, and it's, it's really cool. sick. It's yeah, sick it's really actually. Good. Yeah. Um, and then they basically are like, okay, we're gonna go to Highburn. Yeah. And now we've got the two books. We're going to... We can fuck up this cauldron. We're fucking up the cauldron. They're there. And then suddenly King Highburn's like, hey guys. Yeah. Hanging up on my cauldron, are we? The, the mortal queens are there. Nestor and Elaine are there. Uh-oh. Tamlin's there, by the way. I'd forgotten that Tamlin showed up. Tamlin, Tamlin has sold out. Tamlin's betrayed everyone. Tamlin's betrayed everyone, including Lucy. And Lucy didn't know this. Has sold out Nestor and Elaine, basically. In ex- if he if he told Highburn that and got everyone there in this situation then Highburn would return Feyre to him. Yeah, Tamlin's basically so like, my own goal a, in life is yeah, to get so Feyre back. Yeah, so he's made a deal with the devil, literally, yeah. the person that they're all about to have this fucking war against. Yeah. King of Highburn is like, I'll make these queens immortal, but first, they're as a test to show them that it can work and yeah. we're not going to kill them, I'm going to make Feyre's sisters. Yeah, I'm going to put Nesta and Elaine in the cauldron. So they put them in the cauldron, so... Now Elaine and Nesta are also high fey. It's crazy. Something happens with Nesta. But so yeah, so basically So they then, gave the high fey. Fey was like, no! Fey was like, fuck, 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 fuck. Because of her connection to all the magic, she, everyone's powers have been stopped, but she can like weasel her way into the magic that's stopping everyone else's magic. Mm. Does like this explosion of light, basically. Mm. And then pretends, she's like, Tamlin, Tamlin. Oh my gosh, Tamlin is like, turns to her, he's like, what have you done to me, bro? Mm. and Rita's like oh how do you manage that one Pharaoh like, and you're like okay guys come on GCSE drama like, iconic like he's swaggering and he's like Whoa, yeah and for a minute me. more is like what the fuck have you like like everyone is like what the fuck so she goes to Tamlin and is like please no more bloodshed no more I love you remember all of that and is like to Reese like take my fucking sisters out of there so more like grabs her sisters winnows out of there and they're all like hey why are you stealing my new thing what the fuck's going on blah blah, blah. <laughs> and she's to like play it off basically because now that they know that tamlin's a baddie as well mm. she's like break the bond to the king she's like break the bond break mm. the bond between me and reese because they all have realized that they are mates. Mm. he thinks he's breaking the bond he's actually breaking the bargain between them both and then Feyre goes back to the spring court with tamlin and when you get there and when Reese gets back to the night court and he's talking to them, everyone's like, go and fucking get her, go and fucking get her. And he's like, my high lady will do just fine. And everyone's like, what? And they're like, surprise, surprise, shoddy. Shoddy. That the night before Tamlin and, uh, not Tamlin, Reese and Feyre had basically like done their mating ritual and he had declared her high lady, lady of, of the, the night court. court. So now the high lady of the night court is in the spring court spying. She's spying. She's a spy. She's a spy. It's a great end. It's a great end. It's iconic. Do you remember in Akatar we were like, nothing fucking happens? Yeah. So much happens. Oh, in this. arguably too much. They're is going, going on. to the prison to meet the bone carver. Crazy. Crazy. I was like, why are we here? I loved that. I like, was like, slay. It's sort of, it's a good, it's, it, it's exposition. It's just yeah. giving you exposition. But I was kind of like, She's just created this whole fucking random prison where he, she's like, where are the guards? And he's like, no guards. no guards. But I'm like, you know, it's hell. In there Ghana. still is so, so many, so many bits where I'm like, stop just verbally telling me law. What, what, where's the bit we were talking about oh my God. the other day? It's something Guys, like page. It's chapter 16. I remember it so clearly. When Feyre comes to the night court like fully basically once she's left Tamlin and she meets all the inner circle and the whole thing yes I know Reese 
knows that she's his mate. Reese knows that he can trust her, like mm. all of this stuff. Feyre doesn't know that. We're not meant to know that yet, sort of thing. Mm. So chapter 16, she meets the whole gang. She sits down with more Cassian, Asriel, Amran, and Reese, the inner circle, who have been his inner circle for 500 years, yeah? yeah. No one else has been brought into this inner circle. Yeah. And I was, <laughs> I was at a concert and we were waiting for them to start. My friends had gone to queue for the bar. It was taking fucking ages. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read Act Akamath on my phone, on my Kindle app. And I was going through it and I was like, what? This is so fucking boring. Yeah, yeah. It is literally, I'm not joking, a full chapter, paragraphs on paragraphs on paragraphs of just giving like info dumping just giving you information that feels so unnatural because i'm like this is this isn't even a conversation yeah and there's no like i would understand if they were like hey if you're going to be part of this now you need to know x y and z information so here's the information be fine with that be fine with that but don't play this off as like a casual family dinner and you're sitting down and the constant group dinners by the <laughs> way like why can none of them eat a meal alone it's insane because they're trauma bonded to each honestly. other honestly but they like but yeah it's I, like I, so I couldn't i could not believe it it was a f- it was so many pages it but it was it was so intense i was like you can't it's so take it boring. boring you're it's like so what's going on? so then later in the book they're making reference to that conversation and you're like i don't yeah remember what that's about and i just am um, again like all the stuff with the culture in the books so you're like i've just got to go with it yeah but you, i'm on board for the vibes yeah now. yeah and the vibes are when the vibes are vibing the vibes are vibing they're constantly doing things they're going to the human world they're you know going places they're going to the valaras they're going to the cabin they're you know going on these little missions in between which are like fun yeah and like keep things going and it's not just like in akatar where it's just like we're hanging in the sprinkle and here's the information I'm going to give you. It's quite like insane the amount that like that so much happens when like, yeah. when they're like at the bone carver and then they're at the summer court like the next page and you're like, what? <laughs> My God, where are we? Where are we going? And obviously all of these things then mean that their relationship, Rhysand and Feyre's relationship can grow like through these interactions where they learn more about each other through the way that they're handling these different situations which is so much better than just like her and Tamlin just staring at each other across a table there are just so many excellent bits that make like for just perfect perfect vibes so one of the other things that they do which we kind of mentioned earlier is that to test if she's got these powers they are like we will go to the weaver to see if she can like call to a magical objects and the weaver is first of all fucking so scary so scary oh my god old gray lady and she's like making things out of like skin and hair and like everything's covered in like human it's fucking gross but it's it's so atmospheric it's really scary because when she's in there and the weaver's like singing this song as fair is like silently moving around because the weaver's blind and trying to find this thing and then suddenly the weaver just really quietly goes who is in my house and i was like no not me not me and it's like really like yeah gross but like before that when they're like prepping for it they're talking about what weapons that um she can use because the the weaver recognizes like new objects in her house Mm. so like would recognize a crossbow for example but it's fine to have knives in there because she'll have loads of knives in there and he's um yeah He's like putting then all of these knives belt knife belts on her. Oh it's yeah. Like, Reese knelt and spread wide the web of leather and steel, beckoning me for stick a leg through one loop. I did as instructed, ignoring the brush of his steady hands on my thighs. Do not make a sound, do not touch anything but the object she took from me. Reese looked up, hands braced on my thighs. And I highlighted that because I was like, hot. Don't brace your hands on my thighs, so I'm crying. Bow, he once ordered Tamlin, and now he here he was on his knees before me. One thing he says in in this book, which I was like, you're like, okay, um, like the the bowing before her is fit, but he's got like tattoos above his knees. Yeah, she's like, what do the tattoos on your knees mean? And he's like, it means I bow for no one. I get bow, blah blah. And then, but every time they do it, she's like, I looked at the tattoos on his knees and I thought, he's here bowing. he was bowing on his for knees me. for me. And just, we're equal. And you're just like, okay, okay, yeah. yeah, I get it. They're always about to be really horny and then get interrupted by absolutely mortal danger. But I like th- a million times. They're like, maybe we're gonna like touch each other, and then it's like someone's getting killed, and you're like, oh, stop. But like, I do think, for God's sake, fair like. 
So you know in Akita when we're like, stop crashing the horny vibes? Yeah. Is that because of the way they then interact in these fights and stuff with each other normally? Mm. I'm like, the horny vibes continue. The horny vibes continue always because they're always. always being horny to each other. And I kind of love it. He's got like some magical paper where he can just like write her a note and it sort of it appears, appears next yeah. to her. And then he like leaves it with a magical pen so she can write back to him. And at one point they are literally just sexting. Yeah. But they're doing this like notes back and forth thing. And, and she's like, go and lick your wounds then. I'd much rather you licked my wounds for me. Yeah. I clamped my lips shut to keep from smiling as I wrote, lick you where exactly? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wherever you want to lick me, Feyre. I'd like to start with everywhere, but I can choose if necessary. That's Sorry, that's still him. I shouldn't have changed my voice. <laughs> let, me ch- uh, let, me, let me do that again. Wherever you want to lick me, Feyre. I'd like to start with everywhere, but I can choose if necessary. Let's hope my licking is better than yours. I remember how horrible you were at it under the mountain. I was under duress. If you want, I'd be more than happy to prove you wrong. I've been told I'm very, very good at licking. I clenched my knees together and wrote back, good night. And I'm like, and then he said, and to be fair, this, I was like, oh, oh, (laughs) bitch, try not to moan too loudly when you dream about me. I need my beauty rest. And I was like, slow. And it's like, I didn't dream about Reese. I dreamed about the Atoll. Yeah. (laughs) And And his claws on me, gripping me as I was punched. Okay. you're like, Okay, you're not horny. Okay, so you're it. not. Okay, so you're really not horny. I'd be dreaming about him, but whatever. I and then when they shag later, again, it's so much talk of licking, and I'm like, we have to stop using the word, the word licking. Licking is the word licking is 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 Mm-mm. a lot. Not it's actually not quite a lot. Me. It doesn't necessarily like hit. It it does hit, but like it doesn't hit as much until at the end he's like, uh, yeah, no, we've actually been mated this whole time. So I've been like unbearably obsessed with you mm. and in quite a lot of just sort of like physical and emotional mm. pain because everything that you are experiencing i'm experiencing when you were in the spring court and you were having nightmares every night and no one was comforting you i was just here in the night court also having those nightmares awake listening to you be sick down the bond and being like can someone do something mm. and no one was doing anything and that was like absolutely killing me mm. and once you know that information you go back and you look at every interaction in a different light mm. and i just fucking loved that mm. i was just that just made me like Mm. Oh, like it does oh yeah like, it's just so like oh he's just it's just so good he's just yeah, so obsessed he's, with her and it's so good he's so obsessed with her and it's so good and what i would say is resand is the blueprint he is absolutely the blueprint for for so many fantasy men and so many like just romance men in uh, general well, that's what zayden is if there were resand walks so zayden can run if there were mating bonds in fourth wing not which much. the dragons kind of mean that there are yeah that that is what yeah um, violet and violet and zayden would be because it's like you find out in yeah. fourth wing eventually that he's like yeah no i didn't want to kill you i wanted to penetrate you yeah but i wasn't really allowed so uh yeah. and when he's like yeah i was just can you just fucking stay alive yeah and i was like give a shit yeah and then he's like i actually did give a shit yeah. and you're like yeah and that's exactly what this is yeah yeah he's there's... like i made you promise to come and see me one week a month so that i could fucking keep an eye on you yeah. because i knew that tamlin was going to basically start abusing you yeah. and he did and i was right shock horror no surprise and you're just me. like yeah <sighs> i have written and so this bear in mind this note is from me at the beginning of Ak- akmath so I'm, yeah. I'm in a naive girl um i'm a young naive girl i'm finding myself massively just being like shut up tamlin let's go back to the night court yeah pathetic of you like because that's what she that's what she wants us yeah. to be. He's such a vivid character, Risa, and he's such a kind of... I think he's the strongest character in in the book in terms of, like, the most fully formed one. Mm. I'm still not Feyre's number one fan. I'm not. She's grown on me a lot. Yeah. Because she does do some fairly iconic stuff. She does and some she, iconic stuff. Also, she just loves being like, you're a fucking pig. You're a pig. <laughs> it's really it's funny. Gross. Um, and she's still really like... <laughs> yeah, I'm not... <laughs> It's my favourite thing about Farah. I For the listener, I did like another like, come on then, everyone. Let's fucking go. Right, what's <laughs> next? Like, what she's <laughs> but she's so, is she's so like scrappy and so like, yeah, fuck it. I'll go see the bone cover. Yeah, I might be scared, but I'm going to fucking do it anyway. I'm brave. I'm scared, but I'm brave. I'm going to fucking do whatever the fuck I like and let's motherfucking go, bitches. Like, I'm brave. I'm brave. Like she's, she's so like... I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna winnow into the sky, even though I've never really practiced it before. I'm gonna do whatever I fucking like to save the people I love. Yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> like she's fucking crazy. 
<laughs> she's fucking crazy. Like she's a bit like I still think at points I'm like, you're so smart in some respects and so dumb in some yeah. others where I'm like, Feyre, please. <laughs> she does some iconic stuff. He does some iconic stuff. There's a bit when they're in the summer court where um she's like Oh yeah. She's really flirting with Tarquin to like the high the high the high Lord, Lord of, of the, of the summer, summer Court. court. Never, we'll never be able to say that. High, 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 high. The High Lord of the Summer Court because she's like trying to get around the realm as much, much as possible to be able to find half the book that they know is there. Mm. She's like really flirting with him and she, but she's like, oh, but fucking Reese is flirting with his fucking stupid sister. Yeah. What a pig, even though I'm doing the exact same thing. Ooh. And also we're not even involved with each other and I've actually not even admitted to myself that I like him, but I'm looking at him mm-hmm. flirting and I'm oh, like, gross. What? Stop it. And there's a bit when Cressida... Tarquin's sister is being really like shirty and Tarquin's like we're going to treat them as our guest Cressida like pipe down Feyre is as welcome here as anyone blah 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 Cressida made many sacrifices on behalf of her people do not take her caution personally and Reese says we all made sacrifices and now you sit at this table with your family because of the ones Feyre made so you'll forgive me Tarquin if I tell your princess that if she sends word to Tamlin or if any of your people try to bring her to him their lives will forfeit. Even the sea breeze died. Do not threaten me in my own home, Reese and. My gratitude only goes so far. It's not a threat, Reese countered, the crab claws on his plate cracking open beneath invisible hands. It's a promise. And I was like, it is so just like the whole book is just Reese being like, and everyone here needs to remember what Feyre did for you all. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that she's like a special pretty princess. That means she's a sick old girl yeah. and I love her. Okay. <laughs> Just so you know. Just so you're fucking aware, actually. If you've got anything to say to her, you can go through <laughs> me yeah. first. You say it to me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You fucking... I know what it was like down there under the mountain. She was in body pain. Every night, you guys have got no idea. Who did that to her? Couldn't be me. Couldn't say. But the character that he becomes in the second one, and obviously, he's like playing up his certain, his dark person traits, right? Because they're all like, he's evil. And he's like, yeah, I am evil. Oh my God. He's the high lord of the court of nightmares. But in the second one, there's loads of stuff in the first one that you're like, this Resant would not do that, even when he was pretending to be evil Resant. He still wouldn't be like, get your bikini on, lass. We're going on the lash. Like, he wouldn't do that. I feel like he would find a workaround mm. for it. So I feel like she did the first one and then was like, hmm. But as I said... Maybe I need to develop Reese's character a as little bit. Said, <laughs> as I said in the first one, Under the Mountain, those are the actions of a desperate man searching for reprieve. Searching for a moment of relief, a moment of lightness. He's been there for 49 years. I think we can cut him some slack for not Funny. being on his A game. I just more think it's bad writing. Oh, yes. Oh, well, certainly. Well, of course. Certainly, my, my dear boy, of course. <laughs> my jaw just clicked. Right. Ow. And then after they go to the summer court and they have sort of announced to each other now that they find each other at not announced sorry they've, had announced. It. they've not they've actually gone about it completely the opposite of announcing they've been like Ferris been like uh i've always told you i found you attractive and he's like no you fucking <laughs> have it don't shut yeah. up he's like don't fucking gas at me. yeah she's like yeah you're really fit actually but i said that i've I? always said that i've always said that and actually you've never given me any hint that you found me attractive and he's like i've been just kneeling before you like, and feeling you up sexting you what are you talking On the about piece- do you not remember the pieces of paper and she's like no no couldn't couldn't couldn't, couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. I've never done that in my life. <laughs> Feyre is very like, Feyre's in denial. Feyre is that girl who's like the opposite to us, where she's just like, I just don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going Anything on. Anything could be going on. I don't on. think he likes me. And you're like, and if it was us, I would be like, yeah, he fancies the fuck out of me, you dumb. You are, fucking, you, are you fucking dumb? dumb? I know you've just learned to read, but you know, learn to read the room. Come on. <laughs> the fact. <laughs> Great joke. It's a really good joke. It's a really good joke. The fact that she like just about learns to read and write and then he's like right we're sexting with pieces of paper now okay i know and we he's were like so, the like, reason i taught you to we, do this is so we could do and we were so like paper. tamlin writing that poem with like the horny poem with all the words she didn't understand was an ick but when T- reese has taught her to write basically so they can sex we're like king sex positive <laughs> king i love that feminist king feminist king reese and he says am i supposed to deny that i find you attractive You've never said it. I've told you many times and quite frank- frequently. <laughs> I've told you many times. <laughs> I've told you many, many times. times. And quite frequently, how attractive I find you. Well, maybe you should do a better job of it. A thrill went through me as he braced his powerful arms on the table and purred. Woo! Is that a challenge, Feyre? Oh, 
My God. Yes, it is. I held that predator's gaze. The gaze of the most powerful man in Perithian. I'm like, don't call him a predator. <laughs> let's, let's not call him a predator. Don't call him a predator. He's actually the king of concern. <laughs> I'm Chris Harrison and this is how to catch a predator. <laughs> Cameras come in. I'm Feyre and this is <laughs> how to catch a predator. <laughs> and they'd been speaking about the underwear shop in town earlier. Oh, Why don't we go down to that store right now, Farah, so you can try on those lacy little things so I can help you pick which ones to send to Tarkwood. Um, <laughs> to Tarkwood. To Tarkwood. Um, there was flirting and then there was dot, 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 this. And I was like, this is actually um, textbook flirting, weirdly enough. Yeah, yeah. There was flirting and then there was whatever this was and you're like, yeah. flirting. flirting. More flirting. And I might have very well gone to that pretty shop with Resand. And this, guys, when I tell you I was gagged i was like this is this is one of the bits where i was like this this is iconic this is iconic behavior from recent and i'm I'm obsessed with it and it's so horny Mm. i could almost see what would have happened the shop ladies would have been polite a bit nervous and given us privacy as reese sat on the settee in the back of the shop while i went behind blah 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 blah. reese would have looked me up and down twice and he would have kept staring at me as he informed the shop ladies that the store was closed and they should all come back tomorrow and we'd leave the tab on the counter he would have looked at me the entire time at my breasts visible through the lace (laughs) at my breasts at the plane of my stomach now finally looking less starved and taut at the sweep of my hips and thighs between them then he would have met my gaze again and crooked a finger with a single murmured come here and i would have walked to him aware of every step as i'd have stopped in front of where he sat between his legs his hands would have slid to my waist the calluses scraping my skin then he'd have tugged me a bit closer before leaning in to brush a kiss to my navel his tongue i swore as i slammed the post of the stairwell landing And I blinked, blinked as the world returned. And I realized cursing him for the vision he'd slipped past my mental shield. Uh, But then imagine that happening. So he's literally, I re sorry. I reinforced him as I entered my room and took a very, very cold bath. (laughs) Uncomfortable. You're in this guy's house. You're living in his house. He saved you from your basically an abusive relationship. He has then um, projected into your mind an image of you guys about, about to fuck in a public place in a public place he's like in his mind thinking about looking at your tits and then you're like but there's nothing between there's us nothing between like, us i'm that, still not sure if he finds me actually attractive after that if he does that i'm walking back up the stairs i'm going to his room i'm like knock 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 hi would you like to go to the shop and fuck on the shall counter shall we fuck have you considered? <laughs> like, Have you I, considered I fucking? I do not understand. No. I mean, obviously, like, that, the projection thing is not something that happens in real life. But, like, if, if someone said that to you, wouldn't you be like, okay, well, we should. Well, again, it's do like, it. it is all the PTSD and all of that stuff linked in, but I am like, this is the point where you're like, babe, come on. And I respect This I, is what listen, I'm saying. This I do respect saying. it because I think the payoff of when they do especially in that inn when they when they finger each other and there's only one bed there's only one bed classic the blueprint i'm like that's iconic and that is so worth the build up but when you're reading it you are like favor come Come on on. straight away after that she wakes up in the middle of the night and like her room is enveloped in like darkness and he's having a nightmare and she goes and like wakes him up basically and shake like shakes him awake and two things about the scene is that when he's having a nightmare, he's like thrashing around. He's like tearing up. His his he's got talons that come out of his hands like Wolverine. Oh, don't they? All? And then it's also like, and his feet they ended in claws too. And I was like, egg. Not the clawed. Not feet. the not the clawed, not feet. The clawed feet. I don't not want to me. see the clawed feet. Not Thank you. Absolutely not. I'm going to pretend that didn't happen. No. Yeah. This is all in the same chapter. We've gone from this very horny. She's gone to have a, have a very cold bath because she's so horny. Mm. Then he's having a nightmare and she goes in. He's butt naked. Butt naked. Butt naked. And then she's like, yeah, she sees his massive dick. Yeah, and in that and context, then, you are a little bit like mm, slightly inappropriate. Yeah, and then she's talking about as well that um, later on she says seeing his big dick that was what inspired her to paint again. <laughs> Is that when what she's she talking? Says? Yeah, she's talking much later on. She's talking about not wanting to paint. Though maybe that night I'd seen him kneeling in the bed. Maybe that had changed a bit then. And she's talking about wanting to paint. And I'm like, so big seeing dick him, makes you want to paint. Big, what that's, that's, that's my <laughs> note. My note is big dick makes, makes you want to paint. paint. And who can blame her? But I'm like, come on. Uh, I'd love to take this opportunity to talk about the wings briefly. Yes. So um, let's talk about the wings. At the so so Reese has got these wings. Cass has got wings. Asriel really has got wings. And I think Reese, because he's half Fey, half Illyrian, he can like. And there's a lot of chat about how Cass and Az, the boys, they're always like sitting in chairs where they can't get their wings in, or they're sat in a chair where they can get their wings in because it's a special chair. Yeah, like when they go to see Nestor and Elaine and. 
Pharaoh's like, fuck, I should remember to bring some stools because Cassian and Asriel can't sit So down. Cassian and Asriel are like, oh, God, oh, God, God my, God, 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 my, God, my fucking wings. <laughs> and it's always like, his wings flared, his wings popped out, his wings were here, his wings were there. There is a bit where uh, Rhysand's basically like, yeah, my wings are like super sensitive, actually. She de- firstly, she describes him as membrane, which I was like, what? <laughs> It's like a like imagine a pair of bat wings on the no. back of a human man. Like it's just the texture for me is disgusting. Yeah. But he's basically like, as an Illyrian soldier, you don't let anyone fuck with your wings. No one's touching your wings. But as my if some if someone around here was my mate, who could that be? If anyone <laughs> happened if someone happens to be my mate, that is the person that you would let touch your wings. And basically if we were doing it and, and you, you touch ran, my wings, yeah. I'm coming straight away. It's like I think it's like down the spine of the wings it makes you. I'm jizzing, and I was just like, no. I yeah, I kind of I can't I, be doing I can't this. be doing it. I'm really not a fan of it because then there's so it it kind of is just like the wings are doing too much in the sense that like when there's too much going on. With it's the wings. really sad in the sense that like the women have the Illyrian women have their wings clipped so that they can't run away basically and can be metaphor for fgm yeah yeah huge metaphor for fgm which i was like that's Ooh, dark very dark that's really dark um so that they can just be used for like breeding purposes basically and chores yeah um and that's really sad and then there's loads of stuff about the power of the wings and 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 in like when cassian and reese both get really injured at different points in this book and their wings get fucked and it's like meant to be the most painful thing in existence yeah like to really like sort of stop their power you like stab them through yeah the wings yeah and, stuff, and yeah. like a lot was kind of going on with the wings and then i was like and i don't i really don't need the added i didn't need down the, the spine is gonna make you come and it's just not no, yeah no, i'm no, not no, i'm no. not into it but i got some friends who are really into the wings i could understand it and also, I'm not really into the flying. Like, weirdly, I thought I would be more into it. I'm into winnowing because teleportation is the dream. Yeah, of superpower. course. Superpower. Of course. I would kill to to be able to winnow. Yeah. But the flying, it kind of... There's so many conversations that happen while Cassian or Asriel or Reese is carrying Feyre in the sky and, like, flying around. And she's just, like like, a baby, like, against them. And I'm like... I don't really, I just don't really like it. Kind of like the thought of a man like flying, like holding you in like a bridal pose as well. And then the like and their wings and their legs are just dangling there. I'm like, ick. My, yeah, my the dangling so legs. The dangling legs is such an the ick. The dangling right. legs as they're flying around. Like fair enough if they're like fighting or whatever. I understand because I imagine you'd be losing your legs and for like- kicking. But the thought of someone just carrying <laughs> Feyre, arms just still, the wings are just going- <laughs> just icks me out so much so i'm not really into the wings at all i found it i found the i found i found the bit where they talk about the wings is this when they're in the woods they're no they're in the in the hotel it's not a hotel <laughs> they're in a premiere inn <laughs> they're in the they're in the inn so they go to the they go to these woods for some trading reason yeah and, and basically um, people can track Resan's magic so when he winnows places people can track him then they end up like going to this inn to stay overnight and again because Rhysand doesn't want to use his magic because he doesn't want more people to find them they're like we'll pretend to be poor <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 I'm Let's, gonna put my hood up I'm gonna put to be my, poor yeah and put a glamour on me so I'm less super attractive um and so <laughs> and then they're in a cabin no they're in an inn and there's only one bed and it's really cold and they're wet so they have to take all their clothes off to get dry and mm. have body heat and they're just kind of like spoon in i think he Wait. spoons her and then he wraps a wing around her that's what happens yeah it's basically to keep the warmth in he wraps one of his wings around her and then she's like dragging her fingers down his wing which yeah. i was like incredibly personal yeah my knuckles brushed one of his wings smooth and cool like silk but hard as stone with it stretched taut hard as stone i blindly reached again and dared to run a fingertip along some inner edge inner edge inner edge resand shuddered a soft groan slipping past my ear that he said tightly is very sensitive does it tickle? It feels like this. Favourite. He leaned and cl- leaned in so close that his lips brushed the shell of my ear as he sent a gentle breath into it. Into it? Directly into it. Into <laughs> she, He's breathing into, <laughs> into her ear. ear. Sam would punch him in the face if I did that. <laughs> Honestly. He I'd be single. That. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my, single. <laughs> I'd be single. Single. My back arched on instinct, my chin oh, tipping up at the caress of that she breath. She is arching her back non-fucking stop by the way it's non-stop back arching and during sex the question blurted out i'm like you horny bitch like shut up you're literally during sex 
about during sex? What about during sex? <laughs> Hypothetically, of course, but what about during sex? Have you considered? They're literally naked and spooning. And yeah. she's like, oh, what about during sex? What about during sex? He's got a boner. He's like pressed up against her arse. She's arching her back and she's like, and during sex? <laughs> An Illyrian male can find completion just by having someone touch his wings in the right spot. And I would say him saying find completion yeah. is pretty much... Horrible line is my note on that. The world's ultimate turn off. Yeah. A male can find completion. And you're like, okay, we're never doing it. Well, it's like science. Like, <laughs> find completion. Like, well, you'll never find completion with me, sir. Not with that language. <laughs> not with that attitude. Okay, no. So I was wrong about the... They're not in the inn when that happens. They're on their way. They're on their way to the Court of Nightmares, where they are having to go to get this orb that will allow them to show the Queen's Valaris, basically, without bringing them there. Oh, yeah. We're, we're skipping around, obviously, as well, we too much, are. listen. But, but like, they, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So they have to go to the Court of Nightmares to um, so Asriel can fuck about and find this fucking orb. Um, basically, to do this... and. I respect the plot point. I respect the idea. I'm not sure if it was completely necessary. I don't think it really holds up in terms of does it make sense. That to to ensure that Asriel goes, the biggest distraction that they need is that Reese Feyre needs to be like Reese's pet. The Court of Nightmares is the bit, if we haven't said this already, is the bit of the the Night Court where like all the that's where all the bad guys are. So everybody thinks that the Night Court is basically just like the Court of Nightmares, which is just like being under the mountain, which is just like all the fucked up guys are there and they're all just kind of like basically Again, the scene around and about just like doing it. Yeah, <laughs> The scene from Narnia where all the goblins are on the drums. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is what the Court of Nightmares is. Actually, in my is. opinion, is that scene from Narnia. Resand is basically like, I've got a certain reputation at the Court of Nightmares where basically everybody thinks I'm this big evil guy and I've got all this ego and rah, rah. So he's like... Feyre, like, you, you should come because, like, we're, we're making you involved in the plans. Yeah, Feyre. and people know that she's there now. But um, I'm just really sorry for what you're about to witness. And she's like, oh, no, it'll be fine, babe. She's like, it's fine. I'll do, tell me what I need to do sort of thing. To make everyone believe that, like, we've basically got you under control. We're going to basically be like, I said this word in the last podcast as well. You're like, re sounds like concubine, concubine yeah. right? The outfit they put her in. Which she's flown here in, by the way. Two shafts of fabric that hardly covered my breasts flowed to below my navel, where a belt across my hips joined them into one long shaft that draped between my legs and barely covered my backside. And I don't think she's wearing underwear. Some Court of Nightmares lore for you mm. is that re sounds like, listen, these people exist. I let them do what they want to do. I'm just sort of they, like, it, yeah. It runs itself. It's fine. Sometimes I go down there to solve a dispute. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. So the person who is like running the court of nightmares is Morrigan's father. Yeah. Who is called Keir. And I was like, Keir Starmer? The Prime Minister? Keir, how did you get here? And he is gross. He's horrible. Mm. Some of the back story for, of more, which I forgot, which I actually really liked. It's grim, but it's quite good, I it's think. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So everyone hates Keir. And they're under the mountain. And Cassie and Azra are like, oh, I'm going to fucking kill him one day. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to kill him. Absolutely hate him. Blah, blah, blah. And... Reese is like, yeah, basically like parades Feyre about, sits her on his lap whilst he like does all these dealings with Keir and with the court. There's knowledge of Feyre's existence now and where Feyre is and all of that. So they're like, we have to make you look not like really powerful. Like you're a threat yeah, or anything. Yeah. You're my whore. It's so funny because they're like, we're selling the we're selling the part. We're really acting. We're really like proving, you know, we're really doing what we've got to do for the mission. And I'm like, he's fingering you. So... I'm like, we don't need to be doing this much. Basically, guys. like Reese, go, they go in and Reese, Fair is in her outfit as described. So she sat on his lap with her, bear in mind, one piece of cloth between her legs. She's got her legs wide open. Yeah. And he's basically got his hands on under the, the dress, inside of her thighs. Yeah. One under the dress on her ribs and one under the dress on her upper thigh. There's so much detail then of his hand like inching higher and higher, his knuckles like grazing the underside of her breast. And then there's one point where he like touches her vagina. He touches her vagina because he feels that she's wet. And you're like, what, what are we what doing? Are we doing? And he's like, don't worry, it's a, your body's natural reaction. Like blah, blah, blah. I was kind of vibing with it and I was kind of not because I was like, I couldn't, I just couldn't stop thinking about the fact that they're like, this is all an act. <laughs> Like, you know, it really felt this very like... This is what we like, have to do. This is what we have to do. We have to do this, you know. And I was and just, I'm like, I, I can't... You could have danced. Do you know what I mean? I could only imagine seeing someone do that and being like, 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. And God, I think are we it okay? is the thing, like, you know, Kier, Reese is like, get her some fucking wine because he's being, like, disrespectful. And then he goes and gets the wine and he stood there whilst they're, like, dry humping on this fucking throne. And he can't, Kier, like, can't come up to him and give her the wine this until he so says like, so. Stop. And he's just stood there like, oh my <laughs> God. And you know, you know, when you're like, it's bad that I am like on the same page as someone who is this horrific villain, monstrous <laughs> character. But I'm like, yeah, Keir, fair play. I agree. I agree. And then, yeah, and then they come back and he just basically puts her down and he's like, oh, sorry about that, babe. Like, yeah, I really actually, but again, I, know I don't feel good about doing wanna, that. He doesn't want to cross the line that, you know, he doesn't because he knows that they're mated and he, she doesn't, blah, blah, blah. We knew what tonight would require of us. Please, please don't start protecting me. Not like that. Yeah. I will never, never lock you up, force you to stay behind. But when he threatened you tonight, when he called you whore. That's what they called him for 50 years. I was like, and yes, I, was like I know. I, know. I, I remember because you told me so many times. It's hard to shut down my instincts. 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 Yeah. Just oh, like, I ha- I yeah, like someone else had instincts to protect, to hide me away. You seem to be going along just fine with it until Kia said, I will kill anyone who harms you. Yeah. I will kill them and take a damn long time doing it. Go ahead. Hate me. Despise me for it. You're my friend, I said. And I'm like, Feyre. I don't do that with my friends. I personally am not letting my friends put their fingers in or near my vagina. Crazy, I know. Yeah. You're my friend. And I understand that you're high lord. I understand that you would defend your true court and punish threats against it. But I can't. I don't want you to stop telling me things, inviting me to do things because of the threats against me. I am not him. Reese breathed. I will never be him. Act like him. He tried, stop comparing me to him. And you're like, okay, Reese, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, baby. Yeah. I will. It is like, he is iconic. Him being like, I will kill anyone that touches you. I will do it slowly. I don't care, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, we're We're friends. friends. And you're like, babe, come on. Is that what we're saying to each other as friends? I mean, like, I would would say that about you. I would kill anyone for you. Do you know what I mean? That's true. But I'm like, I wouldn't do it after just basically fingering you in a throne. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Like that kind of that I would kill anyone who hurts you. Mm. That can be a friendship thing. It can. But the I would the added context of her being like, I'm half naked. Yeah. You had your hand under my dress. You felt me being wet. And we're like, it's fine. You like <laughs> last week you fucking put an image in my head of us fucking at a lingerie shop. I wouldn't be like, <laughs> <"We're friends!" laughs> all of these things we're friends. It's all of these things added up together that makes you feel like honestly maybe we're not just friends have you, you know? considered that we are not just friends you know literally it's to be fair it's quite soon after this that you think of at, the, at the, the inn god it's so iconic <laughs> if you can't risk using magic then we'll have to warm each other i said and instantly regretted it body heat i clarified so yeah then there's like nice bits of a nice little conversation after um after they eat their mystery meat dinners <laughs> um <laughs> don't say mystery meat <laughs> that's what dinners. it is that's what it is that's what it is um when I tucked myself into an oversized sweater that smelled faintly of Reese, I sat cross-legged on the bed and waited and I was like, where why? are we? And also I was like, why? Where are you getting this oversized sweater from, firstly? Why, why does, does it, it smell like him? Like, ha- has he got it? Is it his? he bring it? I was like, is he, is she wearing his, his clothes? clothes? He comes back and he's like, well, I, I, that was for me, bitch. Like, what the fuck? I'm going to be freezing. But I'm like, oh, like this, it's like you said with, um... The Callan Mine, the first one, where you're like the rom comness of, yeah, of some of it. Yeah, I'm you're like, like, where are we? I'm so where confused. Are we? Why is she wearing literally the Princess Leia outfit? Because it's a fantasy novel. And then the next page is wearing an oversized sweater and leggings and fuzzy socks. I'm confused. One thought for another. Which is a thing that they do, yeah. but it's never really touched upon. No. I'm thinking that I look at you and feel like I'm dying, like I can't breathe. I'm thinking that I want you so badly I can't concentrate half the time I'm around you and this room is too small for me to bed you properly, especially with the wings. So. Is that a threat or a promise? (laughs) I was like, iconic line, but completely out of nowhere. He's not said anything that direct to her. And so suddenly she's like, what are you thinking, babe? And he's like, okay, well. Yeah, you kind of like. I would have liked a little bit more. Just like a, a s- maybe share, maybe share one thought where they're where they're like, I'm thinking you looked really hot or in like, that wet t shirt earlier. Yeah, babe, or I'm something. thinking I'm glad that he didn't take you. Didn't take you. Why? Or oh, because I yeah, yeah. Every time I'm around you, I feel like I can't breathe. Yeah. Um. But just jumping straight into the every time I'm around you, I can't concentrate and I can't breathe, and I'm supposed to be the high lord, and I'm actually finding it quite difficult. Mm. Um. 
I was like, whoa. So to share body warmth, they spoon. No expectations, he said, just body heat. I scowled at the laughter in his voice. But his broad hands slid under and over me, one flattening against my stomach and tugging me against the hard warmth of him, the other sliding under my ribs and arms to the band around my chest, two band around my chest, pressing his front into me. Nice, that's a good hug. Mm. I thought that, I was like, that's good. That's a, yeah, really good. Really lovely. I traced my finger along his wing. He shuddered, his arms tightening around me. You're very cold. I tried. <laughs> You're very You're cold. Very cold. Um, and he keeps, she keeps doing it. She keeps doing it. You cruel, wicked thing, he purred. Didn't ever, anyone ever teach you some manners? I never knew Illyrians were such sensitive babies, I said, sliding another finger down the inside of his wing. Girl, you know what you're doing. You don't enjoy, well, maybe some people, some people do, obviously. You don't enjoy the wings. No, stuff. no. You're just like, just get to the sort of, um, the genitals, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we just get to the genitals, actually, guys? Um, something I hard. I need to be regretting. <laughs> That's great. Something hard pushed against my behind. Heat flooded me, oh, and I God. went toward. What could it be? Something hard. I stroked his I wing that. again. Two fingers now, and he. Because it's Reese, I feel like he says a lot of iconic things, but like. The smart in general, it's not like Elsie Silver smart. Where no. It's like pages and pages and pages and loads of detail. It's more about the romance of it. Yeah. It's not really about the fucking. Yeah. So it's that sort of level of smart. This scene is good because he's basically saying loads of really hot things. Yeah. And like, whoa, whoa, crazy. <laughs> but like when they actually fuck for the first time, it's pretty like... It's pretty romantic. It's kind of just romantic and you're just a bit like, yeah. You're kind of just like, yeah, that's happening. Like, I think yeah. maybe we are truly poisoned. Poisoned. In, uh, in the brain. But like, I just think... That's what I knew it was going to be like from the first book yeah. as well. Like the 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 smart's pretty like the smart's not really smutting. It's just no. Kind of it's like, just this is a sex scene. It's not smart. Yeah, it's like for the plot as well. Yeah, it helps with the plot a lot. His talking, his dirty talk whilst he's fingering her, is like probably the sm- smuttiest bit of it. Like I would there, say there's so, detail yeah. of like what they do later. There's detail of him licking her clit and shit. They say the word clit and cock at one point and I'm like, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> whoa. Like, her saying the word clit, you are like fucking yeah. like fourth wing where you're like, whoa, we're saying clit. We're yeah. saying clit now. Are we? yeah. We're saying clit. Because of, at the beginning, it's lots of bundles of nerves, lots of apex at the centre of my thighs, like that sort of shit. And then it's the very like, top of my thigh. Yeah. And you're, and you're like, like, God, what could you be talking yeah. about? They're then basically like, okay, we've got to admit something's happening between us. Mm. They are somewhere. And Reese is really, really badly injured. And Feyre is like freaking the fuck out and is doing everything that she can to help him. And but he's like, she drags him into a cave and he's like, oh, oh, he's not doing very well. So she's like, okay, I know who knows the answer to how I can help him. My old friend, the serial. And it's really funny where she's like, someone who's difficult to catch, but I've caught him once before or something. He's like, Feyre Cursebreaker. Good to see you again, my What's old friend. What's going on, my love? Yeah. How are we? What do I need to save him? Like talking, like going back and forth, and ask a very direct question. What do I need to save him? And the surreal's basically like, to save your mate, all you need is blah blah blah. And she's like, sorry, what? My who? And the surreal's like, oh, you didn't know. Oh, favorite. shit! You didn't know. Interesting. And basically the serial was like, your blood will help heal the night, the High Lord faster. So she goes back to Ree, she like cuts open her palm and like shoves her hand over his mouth. He's like, like, oh, drinks him. And then she's like, when were you going to tell me? He's like, what? 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 When were you going to tell me? What are you talking about, babe? She's like, when were you going to tell me that you were my mate? And he's like, listen. Listen. I really want to tell you. I will not listen. I will not. I shan't listen. He's literally like, listen. And she's like, no. No. She kicks off. She's livid because it's the classic. Don't hide things from me. We Don't. always said that we were never going to keep anything from each other, even when we were just friends, which yeah. was five seconds ago. This is something a friend would do. That wasn't very friendly. Yeah. Me recently, you're like, <laughs> God, give me the So she's winnows him back to the Illyrian camp where um, Moore and Cassian and Asriel are. She like dumps him on there. Like he's going to live, but he's still in like loads of pain. She like dumps him on them and is like to more like take me somewhere. Oh, yeah. I need to go somewhere. Yeah. And so Moore takes her to this cabin in the woods where they've all used to ha- hang out all the time and get drunk and do crazy things all together. Woo! Yeah. And then she has the urge to paint again. And she paints the whole <laughs> cabin. She covers it. And I'm like, that is so funny. It's funny to me for a multitude of reasons. Yeah. And the discourse on the internet is the same. Everyone finds this funny. The fact that she has gone into someone's home 
which they've said, you know, we used to hang out here all the time. Rah, rah, rah. This place like has lots sentimental, of really special memories. Special memories, blah, blah, blah. She covers it in paint. Um, and th- it's the image of like Moore and Reese coming in and being like, wow. wow. That's nice, Feyre. Oh. I see you've done Amren's eyes above the door there. That's, That's nice. nice. If someone had come to me and said like, get me out of here, take me somewhere. And I took them somewhere. Out of the goodness of my heart, the kindness of my heart, took them somewhere secret, protected them, even though I'm sort of disobeying my high lord in doing so. And my cousin. And my cousin. And then I got there and they painted my entire house. I'd be like, <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Really like horrible discord and loads of colours as yeah. well. Not even like she's just like, I'm redecorating. No, like, she's, she's just like used it as a canvas. And yeah. it's like, oh God. Painting all her memories. It's really quite cringe, <sighs> actually. By the time Resan shows up, she's like, okay. Okay. I am... Uh, yeah i am into him to be fair so it's okay he turns up at the door he's like yeah i'm still quite injured she's like i'm gonna make you some soup and And he's like soup you're gonna make me food and she's like yeah is that okay i know like that's not really you know the that's not really my duties or whatever and he's like that's a big thing actually for like mated pairs it's an important moment when the female offers her mate food it goes back to whatever beasts we were a long time ago but it still matters the first time matters but it means that the female dot 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 accepts the bond and she's like tell me the story tell me everything and i'll decide by the time you've told me the story whether i'm going to give you the soup or not and what i would say is this story goes on for oh pages and pages and pages of him going it's literally like (laughs) let me go right back to the beginning of time basically (laughs) so a millennia ago prithian was formed the first fae was born onto prithian and you're like (laughs) it's giving adam and eve and I'm like, we don't have that much time, Reese. Yeah, he literally goes back fight to the war 500 years ago. He's telling all of this stuff. Yeah. The soup is burning, in my opinion. She's heating the soup up for two hours. Yeah, for like a so long, long time. This is the point where he says to her, I knew you were my mate from X number of years ago and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you need all of that info now because he never could have told her that. But everything else he says, I'm yeah, like, we could have known, known this before. Yeah. Or we could have known this later. Yeah. I didn't need to know. But he gives a soliloquy yeah it's giving a level drama like it's long and then we get to the stuff under the mountain where he basically says yeah i three years ago i began to have these dreams and then when she crosses the the wall they become clearer again and he's aware he's like and i knew you were here but i didn't know who you were yeah is that that's when he like started the plan to like i've got to get out of here so he like said to amarantha Hey, the curse is coming to an end. Should I go and spy on Tam Tam? Yeah. What do you think? Should you like, know, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let me go up there and we'll just see what's what's going on. In. And, yeah. Uh, um, and then he like tracked her when he was there. And this is the bit where you were like, <laughs> the horrible fairy. <laughs> <laughs> I depicted slaughtering them then and there, but they shoved you and I just moved. I started speaking without knowing what I was saying. Only that you were there and I was touching you and dot, dot, dot. And then it's like her memory. There you are. I've been looking for you. His first words to me, not a lie at all. Not a threat to keep those fairies fairies away. Thank you for finding her for me. And you're like, that's good shit. That's good shit. That's good shit. Unfortunately, that is such good shit. That is like, oh, the crack. Like you're like, oh, inject it. Like, fuck. How he like got in all of the High Lord's heads to put the idea in to, mm. to make her high fae because he couldn't couldn't lose her. And when he talks about like the sound of her neck breaking and he was like, I've never felt pain like it. And you're like, oh my God. But do you remember? So earlier on when they go to the, um, the bone carver, mm. the bone carver says to her, what was it? like what was death like because you did we now know that she she was dead and then they basically yeah. brought her back to life and she is like there was something there like there was something there that basically like guided me back guided me back it was like a feeling of home and it was t- it was a tugging something was tugging me and back in this scene he's basically like it was me it was the mating bond i was basically like although the the the, uh, the word like tug like yeah. the pull makes me like but like he's tugging on the mating bond to be like girl stay alive yeah and so that's the reason as well as the magic from the other high lords that's the reason that she's alive Mm. Mm. can you imagine and then when he goes on as he goes on further on and on and on and on and he says i love you she says you love me reese nodded 
And I wondered if love was too weak of a word for what he felt, for what he'd done for me, for what I felt for him. I set down the bowl before him. Then eat. <laughs> and it was a sleigh. It was a, and, and, and it, it was, was a sleigh. It was a sleigh, yeah. And then he eats he eats the whole bowl of soup because he has to, because of the thing. But I do find it quite funny. And then they shag for the first time and uh, and she is honoured, honoured to be his mate. I am honoured, oh. honoured. And I, I completely forgot when I was reading it about wild love. But it is. It is. It's, it's wild, wild love. love. Again, so, this is the blueprint. Elsie's, Elsie's red Ackermath, so If bitch. you remember in Wild Love, they um she sucks him off whilst kneeling in pain. And, you know, gets the handprints on his thighs and stuff. And they're like, Meh. um When they shag for the first time in Ackermath, they're on a table. Because she's been painting the house, as we know, he just lies her so, down on like, the table on, of And paints. I imagine it like that they're like the squeezy tubes of of paint which it's i'm sure like, it's not because it's a fantasy psh, world but then she's on it and the paint's like squirting everywhere yeah. and they're like all up in it and there's constant bits of being like i put my hand on the table weld the paint and you're like give me strength i rub my hand across his face and leave a streak of blue behind it and you're just like and i'm like i could do without this actually the first time the first time they have and sex really the only time you get it in detail in this book i'm like i could do without the paint actually like, i want to focus on the shagging they're not- sort of they're in this this cabin but it's like you know it's a luxury cabin yeah he's he's the high lord so i'm like there's gonna be a big sofa somewhere maybe even a second they can magic table. it away oh no but yeah that they could shag on the on the so second sh- sofa just shag somewhere else yeah just shag anywhere else but apart it, from on the, it's because, but because earlier he was like i'm gonna lay you out on like the table feast. and feast and you're like okay you but there's paint so you don't have to do that and i'm also like she wouldn't have been like thought you thought you were gonna lay me out on the table yeah. and feast and now we're just doing regular shagging. so you're so you're a liar <laughs> so what you're saying is you lied so to what me. you're saying is once again you've lied to me <laughs> throw that soup up i don't want to be <laughs> they have a soft gentle kiss Actually, I think, you know, I think they don't... my own mate. They, my mate. Yeah, okay. So um, the constant thing of... Now, my his, mate. My mate, mate, my mate. And also my him, mate. you're mine, you're mine. He's mine, she's mine, you're mine. You're my mate. You're my mate. Mine, mate. Mine, my mate, mine. Mine, mine. my mate. And you're just like... Mate, mine. Stop. As much as I am very much down with the whole thing of him being like, I knew you were my mate from blah, blah, blah. Do not think that I'm enjoying the word mate. No. I am not. No, and it continues, unfortunately. It's, co- yeah. Well, I'm in book three and I'm like, it's fucking constant. Yeah. I, I understand the point of it because it's like, you can't just be like, my boyfriend. Yeah. Like, it's got to be like elevated above yeah. just like a regular relationship because it's got to be different from the relationship she had with Tamlin. But also you are just like, hmm. He eats her out on the table in the paint and then he takes her to the bed, lays her down with, with heartbreaking gentleness or something. Yeah. <laughs> and then oh do you know what we for- what is in that scene though that we forgot i'm not taking a tonic are you on the pill i'm not on the pill i'm not i've i've not been taking the tonic and she's we can like get you back on the tonic asap babe. yeah she's like would i be expected to that and he's like i wouldn't expect you to do anything, anything. You do whatever you want. Yeah. It's my we'll high get you lord. On the I don't want you. And but then he's like, fair enough. He's like, maybe let's not get pregnant while we're about to go to war. I don't think I would be able to cope with the stress of that. But then he is like, but actually, the thought of you being pregnant, bit of a sl- and I was like, guys, come on, no. I need help. Then they go and they talk to the queens, and the queens are like, fuck you. But one of them leads the book, and then they go to the, to the to the cauldron, and yeah. as we said earlier, you know, Nestor and Elena there. They get dumped in the cauldron. They become high fae. And it's crazy. Let's like, talk about Nestor and Cassian, please. I've been waiting for you to ask. Yes, I shall. I shall talk about them. You shall listen. Because they are my favouritest people on the planet. <laughs> I am, first of all, I'm a Cassian girly through and through. <laughs> just holding Ellen's wrist like. <laughs> I'm a Cassian girly through and through. Yeah. Always have been, always will be. Till the day I die. Yeah. I'll be on my deathbed thinking about Cassian. <laughs> and I also, I love Nesta as a character. Mm. She, she, ha- people fucking hate her. And I'm like, even from the get go, even when she was a twat in the first one, I'm like, she's funny. <laughs> I'm like, this bitch is funny. Well, the most iconic thing is when, Feyre, in the first book, Feyre comes back because Tamlin sent her away. And Nesta's like, uh, the glamour did not work on me. What yeah. is going yeah. on? I've just been holding it down over yeah. here and I'm yeah. like, what, what are we up to? Yeah. Tell me everything, babe. So when they first go to the sister's house to see basically, hey, can we borrow your house to meet some queens? Is that cool with you, babe? Yeah. And Nesta's like, no. 
fuck off. No, because Elaine's here. Elaine here. My perfect, precious baby Elaine is here. And you're like, God. Yeah, okay. They're eating food and all the fairies like hate the human food because it just tastes really like, bland compared mm. to them. Nesta realises and is like, too good for my fucking food, are you fairy shoot bitch? And you're like, oh. Cassian was sizing up Nesta, a gleam, a gleam in his eyes that I could only interpret as a warrior finding himself with a f- faced with a new interesting opponent. I was like, that's what I was like. That's one way of looking at it, bitch. That's one way, way to way describe a relationship. Then, mother above, Nesta shifted her attention to Cassian, noticing the gleam. What it meant, she snarled softly. What are you looking at? And I was like. Ugh. Someone who, and then Cassian like pops off and it's like someone who let her younger sister risk her life every day. And you're like, yeah, fair enough. Like goes mm-hmm. off on one of everything we said last episode of um, how and Esther and Elena are dicks, basically. Mm. Your sister died, died to save my people. She is willing to do so again to protect you from war. So don't expect me to sit here with my mouth shut while you sneer at her for a choice she did not get to make and insult my people in the process. Nesta didn't bat an eyelash as she studied the handsome features, the muscled torso, then turned to me, dismissing him entirely. Cassian's face went almost feral, a wolf who had been circling a doe, only to find a mountain cat wearing its hide instead. And I was like, I'm ready. Can we end the book here and go to book five, please? Because I just like I it's such a good dynamic. I just I just love all of that kind of back and forth. And then when the queens reject them mm. later on and Nesta like kicks off basically and is like, you're fucking cowards, like to the queen. She's like, you're cowards. And they're like, Ooh. you've got to make tough calls, bitch. Sorry. And then they like disappear. And Nesta's like, <sighs> and Cassian goes over to her. He studied Nesta for a long moment. She was still glaring at the queens, her eyes lined with tears, tears of rage. Um, when she rage. finally noticed Cassian, she looked up at him. His voice was rough as he said, 500 years ago, I fought on battlefields not far from this house. I fought beside human and fairy alike, bled beside them. I will stand on that battlefield again, Nesta Archeron, to protect this house, your people. I can think of no better way to end my existence than to defend those who need it most. I watched a tear slide down Nesta's cheek and I watched as Cassian reached up a hand to wipe it away. She did not flinch from his touch. It's just really fun. It's just like, I just love the the setup. And I do kind of like that you get the dribbles of, I always use that word and I really shouldn't, in Akatar and in this one of like, until the end when you're like, okay, yeah, something's going on with Nesta. Of that, like Nesta is has something going on. Like there's yeah. something under the surface with Nesta. Well, when they're like, the glamour didn't work on her. Yeah, you're like, what the fuck? Abnormal. Yeah. And so when she goes into the cauldron and then she comes out of the cauldron, uh, when they turn them into Fae, it's kind of like Elaine's is like pretty regular and Elaine's like, fuck. But Nesta, she kind of comes out and everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's a lot of power. Yeah. So it's, um, um, it's fucking iconic when they put Nesta in the cauldron. Yeah. The whole thing is iconic. Nesta is like kicking and screaming and mm. is like no. the guards are like really struggling and they're like these big high fae and fae, Nesta is just a human 22 year old or something. The king's like put her under. As they pushed her head down, she thrashed one last time, freeing her long pale arm. I love this. I think it's, it's so iconic, funny. But the like, image of it is so funny. She's just like. Yeah. Teeth bared, <laughs> Nesta pointed one finger at the king of Highburn. One finger, a curse, and damning, a promise. Just as she's going under, like she's from the fucking ring. <laughs> so and as funny. Nesta's head was forced under the water, and as that hand was violently shoved down, the king of Highburn had the good sense to look somewhat unnerved. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. yes. And then Favourite throws up on the floor. Yeah. Even before she took her first breath, I felt it. As if the cauldron in making her had forced had been forced to give more than it wanted. As if Nesta had fought even after she went under and had decided that if she was to be dragged into hell, she was taking that cauldron with her. And I'm like, that's so good. Mm. Mm. That's makes that's one of the bits I think gets people like gets readers, gets me excited for what's to come next. Yeah. So anyway, those are my thoughts on my iconic favourite pairing, Nestor and Cassian, and the snippets that we get from this one is that I'm obsessed and I love them and I love him. The first time his name appeared on on page and when, when he was first there, it was like you saw like a shadow of him and Asriel like outside one of the doors and Faye was like, who's that? And I was like... <laughs> It's them. Cassian's here. Cassian's it's my boys. Here. It's my boys. They're back. I fucking love Cassian so much. Yeah. Well, it's just so nice. Like, as we were saying, the three Fs mm. um, in the last episode, the level of friendship and fun. Hi. Although a lot of quite fucked up stuff is happening <laughs> in the book too. Still, 
like excellent vibes the friendship and fun is just so like they're yeah. all just like yeah what are we doing what are we up to guys yeah. we're all, again we're all having dinner together well, every should night should we go to Rita's tonight get dancing on the tables yeah, yeah. And we're like okay here's my qu- as, as a new new person to this to this world do you have a favourite of the inner circle a favourite of the bat boys potentially I mean I pref- Reese is my favourite one yeah. but I'm like I I don't think I'm obs- as obsessed with Cassian as you are there's time I like Cass and Asriel the same amount mm. for different reasons Asriel's just very mysterious mm. And I'm like, there's more to be revealed about him. And I'm mm. like... There's more to be revealed about him. And there's still, like, having read all five, there's still loads more to be revealed to me about him. Mm. Are you excited about Cassian and Nesta? Y- yeah. Yeah? Like, weirdly really excited yeah. about Cassian and Nesta. Like, I'm like, let's go, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Um, have you enjoyed this episode? I did, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Slay. Massively. Um and we said we weren't going to do them all this year, but because Ellen is fucking powering through them now and can't put them down because powering. The crack has been identified in these books now. Crack identified. Is that definitely Aka War will be out probably in the next month or two. Mm. Don't forget to follow us on everything great. It's five stars. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Turn the bell on. Leave us reviews in places. Send us emails and give us money if you want to. Slay. Give us money. <laughs> um, give us money. We'll see you for the next one. Who knows what it's going to be? Not us. Crazy. Ooh. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>